Hey everybody, Joe Walden here. In this video, we're going to install and configure Fastify and Socket.io for our Raspberry Pi uh, chicken coop controller. Okay folks, let's start writing some code. Make sure you're connected to your Raspberry Pi and let's go ahead and import some modules here that we're gonna need. And um, you can go ahead and look up on your own and get more in-depth information about each of these modules here. But um, I'll just give you a quick summary, all right? So the first uh, in the list there is Fastify. We need Fastify because that's gonna be our backend uh, web framework that's gonna serve up the web pages that we need for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, um, for the user to connect to the Raspberry Pi to the web, okay? And Socket.io is a library that enables uh, bi-directional communication between a client and a server. So when we log in with our web page, we want to be able to talk to the Raspberry Pi and make changes and so on and so forth. Okay. Fastify-socket.io is a uh, simple plugin, but it, you need that to enable the use the use of Socket.io in a Fastify app. So you, we need that. At Fastify slash static is just another simple plugin that's designed to serve static files from a specified directory. And we're going to have a directory called public, and that's where it's going to contain our HTML page. So we need to have this static plugin here for to do that. And lastly, uh, Pinot Pretty. Um, that's used by Fastify to enhance the readability of their built-in logging uh, application. Um, and again, all, all five of these things here, you can go ahead and look up online and learn a little bit more about them, but that's basically what, why we need them in this app, okay? So let's go ahead and install them. All right, let's just clear the screen, keep everything nice and clean. Okay, so the first file we want to create here, we want to go into our coop folder here, okay? And we want to create a file called server.js, okay? And we're going to import a couple things here, okay? First thing we need is this node module that has the path command in there. And we need that because we're going to be um, telling Fastify to go into um, the public directory to serve up the HTML page, all right? The second thing we need to import is the Fastify module and instantiate the server variable and configure some of the logging, all right? So this is the settings that I used. Remember we imported Pinot Pretty, the module in there? So these are the settings I use. Uh, you can put your own settings in here. Whatever you put in here is not going to affect the uh, application in any way. It's just for logging settings, okay? So do, do whatever you want there, but this is what I like to do. All right, the next thing we need to do is import the Fastify Socket.io. Now that'll allow Socket.io to, to uh, operate. Next is we need to register the Fastify static. And then we need to have a git uh, statement here. This function will allow us, to, will um, serve the index HTML page when a client connects, okay? Straightforward. Here's our, uh, let me just bounce back here a little bit. Here's our uh, public folder here, which we haven't, we haven't uh, created that yet, but that's why we need that. And then um, it's gonna serve up this index HTML file, which we have not created yet. And then lastly, we need to have a listener set up in here. And here, this listener will, you know, actually the start listening once this is running. It'll start listening for any requests and serve the HTML page up. Okay, and a couple things I want you to note here: I'm using port 4000. I believe you can put anything you want in there. Um, I think the default is 3000, but um, I, I put 4000 in there. I don't know why. I just did, and uh, the host. You, got, you have to know your IP address. If you don't know your IP address of your Raspberry Pi, uh, this is not gonna work. And if you remember, we did a, uh, in the earlier video, we brought up the command prompt and we pinged the uh, uh, RPI host name to find out what the IP address was. So you need to do that, okay? 
All right, so now that we have this done, let's just save this and come up here to our coop again, our, our uh, root folder, and we're going to create a new folder called public, okay? And in this folder, we're gonna create our HTML document. All right, we're gonna use uh, the Emmet the snippet here, which is just the exc exclamation point. And let's change our title to Coop Controller. And let's add a little a bit of code here just to make sure we know our server is up and running, okay? And that's all we need to do. Let's go back to here. Okay, let's save everything. Save all. And let's go ahead and run it. So go ahead and type in uh, nodemon run server.js and hit enter. And you notice the log fired right there and it says server is listening at the HTTP um, my address. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to put this into your browser. Okay, and um, see what comes up. And what you should see is this. Okay, so if I refresh this page, if you watch the terminal window down there, you notice that it went through and reserved the page again a second time. Okay, so this is working just perfectly. So um, you need to uh, get your uh, page set up and everything and working at this point and, and make sure. I'm going to take a minute here and reconfigure my um, uh, window here so that I can s show both windows without having to flip back and forth. Okay, I want to. Uh, I'm using Microsoft Edge, and I'm using um, the F12 tools. And um, if you uh, and if you notice here, I've got selected. Uh, Samsung Galaxy 20 Ultra, because that's what I have, is it, is it uh, S20 Ultra? And if I select that, then the code that's shown here, I know will work f just fine on my phone, okay? So you might want to try that. Anyways, let me reconfigure the windows here and we'll just jump right back into another, uh, uh, we'll continue our session. Okay, that's much better. All right, so let's just hit Control C and get out of this um, in our terminal window here. Okay, so now we got to add um, a couple more things in here. Let's give some more working space. Um, yeah, the first thing I want to do here is I want to put a, a region in here. And if you don't know what a region is, it just allows you to collapse the code. That's the start. And then we want to put the end region down here. Okay, and now when we collapse this, it gives us some room to write the other code. And you don't have to worry about the other stuff that we did that's in that region, um, that you're never going to touch that again. So just don't worry about that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a couple more things here. We're going to add a uh, method here called run application. And this is this method here actually is the meat and potatoes of what's going to happen uh, when the uh, server starts up. It, when, once it starts up, this this is going to continue all the time. This while loop here is going to go over and over and over forever, and it's going to control all of the items on your Raspberry Pi, uh, all your GPIO, and get your temperatures and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so. Um, just keep that in mind, and we, we, we need that. And then we need another um, thing here, another method here for the socket, socket I.O. Okay. So what this does is it, we, don't, we don't do any work until the server is ready. So once the server uh, instance is ready, then we, we're going to come here and say server is ready. Okay, that's fine. 
But we're going to listen here on the server.io, which is part of the socket.io, and we're going to listen for a connection. Okay? So whenever a client connects, they're going to receive a, a unique ID that identifies that client. And when that same client disconnects, he's going to run this part of the code. Okay? So we're not going to get into that too much right now, uh, but just keep that in mind, what's, what's happening right there, okay? And then down here, uh, of course, we run the application. So in other words, when, we, when this fires, we're going to go through here, and we're going to wait for the server to be ready, and then when it is ready, we're going to run the application here, and then we're going to run the listen uh, portion here to listen for requests. That's how we're going to control the Raspberry Pi. All right, so while this, when this run application is launched, this method will fire and this will run forever, okay? One thing we also need is this uh, delay here. So let's take care of that right now. Let's go back to the top of our application here. And this delay uh, function here, all it does is it delays the application for a specified number of milliseconds. That's it. There's nothing more. So all you just have to just think of that as a delay. So when we come in here to our run application here, uh, we're saying, hey, do all this, and then wait for, in this case, it's set for 2,000, which is uh, 2, uh, two seconds. 1,000 1, milliseconds equals one second. So we're giving the app some breathing room to, so that it can send out the data back and forth to the uh, page, okay? So uh, this particular piece of code here, we're going to send the date out, uh, actually the time, okay? And we're gonna send it to the re re refresh page data, which is a an event, I guess an, it's an ID event kind of thing, so it's a listener, it's listening for that on the server page. But we, did, we didn't create anything there yet. So let's just save this and let's come back over here and let's create another uh, folder in here. Let's call it JS. And in this folder, we're gonna create a file called index.js. And in the index.js, we're gonna add a couple things here. We need to have a socket IO instance and you're gonna, you're gonna get these squiggly lines here because I'm not really bringing it in to this JavaScript, but what I'm doing is I'm going to load this in the index HTML page like this. Okay. So when this page is loaded, it's going to load the socket IO min.js and this will get resolved when it runs. Okay. But you need it here because we're going to write some code on that against that. Okay. So let's go back to here uh, to our index HTML and let's add a couple more things. Let's add this little bit of code that's just a, uh, it's gonna give the server time. This is an ID right here for server time. And let's also um, bring in the script that we were just working on. So we're gonna populate this server time element here from the index.js. So let's just write a little snippet here. And this is, uh, we're just gonna take the, um, let JavaScript get the element by ID, which was server time. And we're just gonna plug it into this variable here. And then, we're gonna um, create this socket on listener here, okay? And what this is gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna wait and see if refresh data is triggered Remember in server.js here, uh, refresh data, okay? That This is the emit. So we're gonna push this out to the connected uh, web page, all right? And index.js is gonna say, hey, I'm waiting for something to come up here. Oh, there it is, I got the triggers fired. And it's gonna take the data that was sent. The data is the uh, date uh, date time string okay and we're going to send it to the this page all right and then 
we will populate server time uh, element here. All right. Now let's see if this works here. Let me just save everything and let's run our program and we should see something here. Oh, I see I, I, I forgot something before I even start. I know I forgot something. In index.html, we never, we never got this, did we? We never took care of that. So what we need to do is in our JS folder here, okay, we need to go up here to node modules, scroll all the way down to socket.io, and go into client dist and get the socket IO min.js right here. All right, copy it. And then go back to your folder here, the JS folder, and then click paste. So now socket IO is inside the, our app here, which it needs to be. It can't, it, we, cause remember when we're in the, we can't use a CDN because when we're in the chicken coop, there's no internet. All right, unless your chicken coop has internet. I'm, I don't know, but mine, mine doesn't. It's out in the barn. <laughs> All right, so now we have this. Um, let's go ahead and try to run it, okay? Okay, so the server is listening, right? So let's refresh this page here. And bingo. Client is connected. Page is sent. And if you look at our page here, you notice the time is being updated every two seconds because of that delay we had in there. All right. So your, your task right now is to get your... Raspberry Pi communicating and doing exactly what this is doing, and then we're going to build on this. We're going to take it to the next step. Okay, I hope every I hope I got everything explained to you to allow you to continue. Uh, I got my fingers crossed for you. Okay, um, I guess let's let's just look for the uh, look forward to the next video, which we're going to really expand uh, quite a bit more on. Um, the temperatures and reading the sensor and all that, okay? The BME uh, 280. All right, folks, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.